Hello and welcome to Sunday Reflection, a presentation of St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Belpre, Ohio. It is the Sunday after Easter, and today we meet the disciple Thomas, who may remind us of ourselves. Let us quiet our hearts and enter into a time of reflection and worship. Our gospel reading for this Sunday tells of Christ appearing to his disciples after his resurrection. It focuses on one disciple in particular, Thomas. It is from this story that tradition has tagged Thomas with the moniker of Doubting Thomas. A reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing you may have life in his name. A reading of the Gospel of John. Thanks be to God. Easter comes and goes. We see it as only a day in the year, but actually Easter is a time of the Christian year that lasts for a number of Sundays. And many would tell you that Easter is really every Sunday when we celebrate the new life that Christ gives us. But because of our human condition, we get kind of excited about special events. And then as they fade away, we kind of go back into a more normal way of living. It's as if we say to ourselves, we just can't stay that excited for that long. And of course, Fear is the same way. Fear motivates us. We encounter it and we say, whatever caused that fear, we will never let that happen to us again. We've been fearful because we've been distant from one another. We've been fearful because we realize now that uh, there can be viruses that cause pandemics even in this modern age. We say to ourselves, we're going to prepare. We're going to make sure that this never happens to us again. But then, just like joy, we cannot maintain that attitude for very long. We slip back into routine. We forget what we were so anxious about. For some people, they're going to stop uh, stockpiling toilet paper. There is peril in all of this. There is peril when we allow ourselves to get too high and peril when we allow ourselves to get too low. There is especially peril when we forget. Had they already forgotten the resurrection? Had they already forgotten the empty tomb? They were locked away scared that the authorities were going to come? Did they not recognize the new life that Jesus gives? What about us? Are we locked away in fear? The fear of not knowing when things will be normal again? The fear that our money will eventually run out? The fear that if we've lost our job, maybe they will not hire us back. 
There is fear aplenty these days. Not only for the disciples locked away in the upper room, but for us as well. Jesus enters our fear and he says, peace be with you. That is the good news, that Christ gives us peace. But sometimes we, don't, we aren't able to hear that good news. Sometimes with all the excitement going on around us, with the joy that happens, and don't you know there will be joy when we get back to normal, whatever that normal is. But for some, it takes a little bit more. The peril, the danger, they're worried about falling back into old patterns. Some of my friends who have issues with addiction, they are parts of 12-step programs. They need the support of their group because they are fearful that they'll fall back into old patterns. Were the disciples fearful that they were going to fall back into the old pattern of a life before Jesus? Maybe Thomas was. This falling back appears to be an issue in the post-resurrection world of Christ followers. Is it really you, Jesus? Look here, look at my hands, look at my side. Yes, it is you, Jesus. Yes, it is you. Thomas, well, I have to see him for myself. And isn't it wonderful that Jesus obliges Thomas? He did not scorn him. He did not ridicule him because he did not accept the testimony of his fellow disciples. Jesus recognized Thomas for where he was in his journey. I don't know why Thomas did not accept the testimony of the other disciples. All I know is that he did not. And Jesus came to him in person. Do you remember? He said, Thomas, look here. Touch my hands. Touch my side. Believe. You remember Thomas's response? My Lord and my God. The good news is that Thomas, just like Thomas, Jesus comes to each of us where we are in our lives. He will meet us where we are. If we are filled with faith or if we're drug low with doubt, Christ will meet us there. And he will help us to grow to where he wants us to be. This is the good news for this Sunday after Easter. God bless you. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, Thomas reminds us of ourselves from time to time. We want to believe, but we're filled with doubt. We want to see what lies ahead, but there is uncertainty. We pray the best for our loved ones and for the situation in our community and in our country and in the world. And we wish that somehow we could know what would come, what will come next. But God, through your son, Jesus Christ, you have asked us to place faith in you. That no matter what the circumstances, you are watching over us, and you are going to care for us. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This has been Sunday Reflection, a presentation of St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Belpre, Ohio. May God bless you this day and in all the days to come.